Is good. there anything more satisfying than beating Ireland right now? With everything that's happened off the field, you look at Johnny Sexton, you look at Rico Ioane, put it in the book, Mills. Put it in the book. <laughs> Don't you love that? I mean, I mean, just that just adds to it, doesn't it? I mean, there's there's another obviously another stage to that post this result. Great result, um, no doubt. There's a lot of anticipation, Jeff, and you know, the, a lot of spice behind it off the field more so than anything else. But also, and I think if you look at it from an All Blacks point of view, this is exactly where they kind of want to be. Well, it's not, not quite the game they would have wanted to play, but the result in itself, that's satisfying. Great result. It didn't live up to expectations. It didn't. The first 40 minutes was dire. And there's a whole combination of things, whether it be scrum resets or whether it be, you know, um, the mistakes that both teams were making, the fact there were so many penalties, we're kicking threes. Obviously, the weather condition in some ways uh, contributed to that. But ultimately, you talk about adding to the fire, because Ireland didn't show up. They didn't show up for this test match. Is it satisfying? Uh, not as satis nowhere near as satisfying as it's been because they were nowhere near their best. And it was great for the All Blacks, Batesy, yeah. and satisfying because I think it was our best performance because we took them out of the game. Yeah. But Ireland weren't there. They yeah. didn't. They did not come and play anything like the number one team in the world. I 100 percent agree. That that was one of the worst Irish performances oh. I've seen in a while. But on the other side of things, was it because we rattled them? Was it because you can only play as well as the other team allows you, like when South Africa suffocates us from time to time? So from our point of view, and I agree with you, it wasn't a great spectacle, it was a grind, but it wasn't it good to see us win in a grind? Yeah. yeah, but if you look at their uh, anthem, for example, when you see them singing... No, I didn't see the passion I saw last year in a regular World Cup where you start seeing how desperate they were. You heard them talking during the week about, oh, no, we're not thinking about... It's not a revenge game. Their coach is talking about Their captain's talking about not being a revenge game. I'm sorry. If you're playing the All Blacks and it's a game you want to win, you tap into everything you need to possibly win. You have to execute and you have to have motivation. It's like they took some of the motivation out. Oh, we'll just go out and execute. You took that away. They had nothing in that game. Bar the fact they got a bit of luck just after half time to get some field position and we were down to 14 men, they didn't threaten us pretty much for most of that game. Yeah, the Wallabies used every little bit of motivation because it wasn't long ago that uh, the English halfback was saying, don't even bother touring there with the Lions. So that ruled them out a year in advance. Well, that has come back to bite them in the bum. It is time now to brag, Mills, because the Southern Hemisphere triumphed over the Six Nation teams. When you look, massive uh, victory for the All Blacks over Ireland. Australia over England at Twickenham, humongous, considering where they have been. And Argentina smoke Italy, one more to come, South Africa against Scotland tomorrow. We don't want to automatically say that that's a South Africa victory, but it could be four zip to the rugby championship. It's pretty good bragging rights, isn't it? I mean, if you sort of looked three or four months ago, you'd, you'd think all the momentum's with the North this last weekend in terms of a Southern Hemisphere point of view, outstanding, it's, it, particularly for the Australians. It wasn't a game, man, that was a fantastic game. I mean, you, there wasn't a game where they sort of went in there and, and magically sort of uh, won by, uh, uh, you know, with a few sort of uh, instances, that right down to the very last play, when they got that ball back, even the English came. I, I, the English are in a bit of a hole right now, right? For, for me, because I, th I think it almost have lost these real tight games, that it almost becomes a habit to lose these tight games. They've lost two to us or three to us, and now this is the fourth one. Um, I, I think no, there's, there's quality there, but that, this game here would have hurt them the most. But you talk about this northern southern hemisphere thing, I think it's a great contest. The fact we're starting to talk about this Nations Cup we're going into in a couple of years, right? So all of a sudden, these two hemispheres are going to compete, and I think it's a good thing for the game. Like you say, there's a few more weeks to go on the end of year tour. Like the Autumn Series <laughs> has just started. To break, I'm but sure. Exactly. And, and if they were on top, guess what? <laughs> yeah, They'd be oh, talking yeah. about it as well. It. Yeah. And I think it's, it's only fair. So so I, I think in terms of, look, we know what's coming up, though. It's, yeah. it's not going to be easy for these Southern Hemisphere teams. But if you're going to start and make a statement, best way to do it was this weekend. And we're going to talk about France a little bit later Ooh. on in the programme. And Anton Dupont, boy, that team was very, very good this morning. I tell you who else is at the top of his game, and that is Damien McKenzie. Mills, did he have his best game at 10 for the All Blacks? I think steering the, the ship and, and direct, direction and under pressure to now those kicks that he, that he needed to now... This was a big game for Damien, um, you know, given sort of the hype that was kind of around it. I thought he did. I, I thought he, he got the balance right, um, the, the kicking game, but also guys guys around him, the organisation. I mean, this this here, you know, he, he's seen an opportunity, right? Right. He's still got to execute, you know, he didn't quite get it right, but 
he was so cool under pressure, and that's what you needed when you, you've spoken about it, Batesy. You need to grind out a win. We don't, we, we've never sort of grinded out wins before like that. I like this about this team, that we've had to go through a lot of adversity to get to this point and, and still win. So man of the match performance from Damien McKenzie. What do you do this week when Bowden Barrett's back? Yeah. yeah, it's a tough one, isn't it? I mean, uh, I, I like where Damien's at. Uh, we've got two quality tens. Uh, there's no doubt. I, I, I think... I'd like to see Damien back out there. I think you, you do, you know, give him, give him a bit more, a, a, another opportunity to be able to go out there um, and, and play with his team. But if you had Bowden go out there, you wouldn't be losing. But you'd start all. Damien at 10. So we've, we've heard it quite a lot in the past in the All Blacks about you don't lose your spot through injury. That, I'll be interested to see if there's a change of philosophy here. In particular, they're always talking about Batesy, about selecting a team to play the next game, the next test. Who's the best first five to beat France. I think they'd started to go down the path of Bowden Barrett. If yeah. Bowden Barrett had been fit, I think he would have started this game at 10. I've got a, I've got a sense he's going to go back there and Damien will make his impact off the bench. And, oh. and, and, and to me, it's just as impactful because we just saw in this test match, yeah. we won in the last 20 minutes. That's when we won this test match. Damien McKenzie can do that for me off the bench. Bowden Barrett can drive the ship well and truly for the first 50, 60 minutes. I, I agree. I think they'll go back to Bowden. I do. I think with his control and stuff. But also, you talk about the last 20 minutes. I know we're going to talk about the French later on. Did you see how open that game was oh. that they played today? So there's going to be some tired bodies. You bring Damien on with 20 minutes. It's going to be, we talked about a grind, Millsy, against the Irish. I, I, I hope I'm wrong. This ain't going to be a grind against yeah. the French. This is going to be an open game. Did you see the way they played this morning? Yeah. Oh. It ain't going to be a grind. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll quote you next Sunday morning uh, at 9am. So uh, sounds like it. These guys have made the decision that Damien McKenzie will make an impact from the bench next week. Uh, sounds like Bowden Barrett and Cody Taylor will both be available. They've both passed all of their uh, HIA protocol tests so far, which is fantastic news for them. They just have to get through the next few days as well. I, I look at this performance uh, across the board, you know, and we got so much impact. Uh, and to me, I, I, it was through th three things I wrote down. We controlled the air. Right, so we controlled the year, probably for the first time in a real high intensity situation where there are some plays around this base which can be a little bit confusing in terms of escort runners, but in the end we controlled it. We competed for it, they made a lot of errors. We controlled that, so for me that went a long way to winning this game. Uh, in terms of playing the right parts of the field, really, really important. And discipline, we only conceded five penalties in the game. We got a yellow card. So, so, so we got on top of an issue in, in regards to that. So for me, I looked at our game and, and it, it, it made it easier for us. It was the fact that we didn't hurt ourselves, yep. we didn't make errors, yep. and we forced the opposition to give us territory. And to me, that's probably, when you're controlling a test match, that's the best way to do it. But I also think, you, you talk about controlling the air, we controlled the air off our own kickoff receipts after yeah, oh, we just scored. Was Jordy? Yeah, exactly. And that that was that played a big part in us being able to get out of our own half and then set ourselves up to then win another big moment with a with a box kick. I think, you know, if you look back at the South African test and some of the tests that we've had during the year, we've struggled to get out of our own half, you know, and by struggling I mean like not collecting those balls off the off the kickoff and then putting ourselves under pressure again to have to defend and then, you know, concede points. I think that was a big part of our game that we actually that we that we won against the Irish without even the Irish sort of realising. You know, it's it's that little bit of momentum and then collecting points off the back end of that and then restarting and regrouping again. I think that was a, that played a big part in terms of the victory. And just on that, Millsy, like we won a lot of those little 50-50s that could have gone yeah. either way. But to loop back to your original point around we won the year, which is a strength of Ireland's, 100%. That's DMAC, you know what I mean? A lot of the kicking was done from him. So you talk around his performance, or you talked up first, that's him. And I know I've said it, I don't want to repeat myself too much, but that's a performance where, curse you ask, is that's his best performance? I don't know if it's his best performance, it's not the flashiness we used to see, but it's a performance that he done which is not pretty. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and isn't that a sign of a good footballer? Yeah. We know he's got the flashy stuff, but it wasn't a pretty performance, but it was a good performance, don't get me wrong. Jeff, you said a few weeks ago before this end of year tour started, you always thought that France was well, going to be the hardest test out of the three. We're here now. We have got a glimpse into them this morning, and we've seen he is the world's best player right now, isn't he? Oh. Anton Dupont. Do you oh. still stand by what you said, that they will test us more than England and Ireland have? Yeah, because they've played this game and Ireland hadn't played a game. So they didn't give themselves a chance to at least get some things 
going, Batesy. For me, France got pretty much anything they wanted going in this game, and they buttoned off a bit in the second half where they make us some substitutions. This guy. But, uh, Anton Dupont is, we talked about it, he's quite possibly the best player in the world. You know, and, you know, last year, you know, severely impacted their World Cup when he wasn't available through injury and then tried to play through injury. Um, but what I saw today is what I saw last year and what the All Blacks have seen in recent times. France are a really good side, Batesy. Yeah, and it's that, that last try that they score. It's that power game. I don't know if that's the right word they're looking for, but the, when their forwards just go to work and there's not a lot of structure to what they do. They just pick here, they go there, they one-off run there, and then you put on the back of that, you put the pont on the back of that, who is holding the defensive line-up, holding the defensive line-up, and then picking his option, you know? And it's easy for a defensive side to say, oh, if the pont runs, let's go and snot him because he's a halfback. He's pretty strong. So he'll bump you off. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's not like he's he's not a threat with ball in hand as well. But that just the way that French, the French forwards just roll their sleeves up. And you talked about big men coming off the bench. This French pack, they are big human beings, man. And when they get rolling and DuPont gets scooting around corners and picking his players, um, it's... I said it's not going to be a grind, so it's not going to be. It's going to be but there's going to be some contest. It's, it's going to be, be yeah. flamboyant. There's going to be contest galore. What about at halfback? Who comes up against Anton Dupont for the All Blacks? Do they stick with Cortez Ratima? I, I think our, our halfbacks are Cortez and also um, Cam Royard. I, Who starts? If I was to look at the French team after today, I'd try to take them on from a structural point of view. I try and slow the game down. It's not in our nature. I try and slow it down and really try and, and pick off their set piece. And so if you're looking at, at, at that sort of style, then you'd think Cortez would, would, would get another go. He didn't get a free ride. And, that, and the, 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 the good thing about not having a free ride and what Cam Roygaard did is he opened things up a little bit. Um, we know what, what, what um, Cortez can do. And if they tidy up that breakdown and deliver the deliver the ball, you know, to one when I played as, as you know, we, we, they should expect, freeing him up a bit more would be, be a bit better. So to answer your question, I'd probably go, I'd probably stick with Cortez. But Cam is man, he's he's, he's pushing good, him. man. He's pushing him. Um, I just hope they stay with these two young men. Yeah. I really do because this is the next evolution and growth for them. Is that you give them the opportunity, Batesy, to go out and play against another world class side for another week. I'm not adverse to switch, switching them over the, for this game though. Just I feel as though Cam's doing some of the things. It was really tidy from him today, but he got a lot of support in front of him. It got really good up front in terms of the guys coming off the bench. But he's shown he's he's back to what he can do. Uh, his passing was really accurate. For Cortez, this was a really tough one. They were, they were niggly today on and around the breakdown. It was very, very messy. Didn't get a lot of protection from his own players and from the referee. There was a lot of guys in and around those rucks. Um, but as, I, I'm actually happy either way, yeah. as long as it's those two guys, because I want their growth. I think it's a perfect position to play them, because we are where we are right now with this team. Surely TJ Pedernada doesn't get a look in. Yeah, well, I, we don't know, but yeah, I, I, I'm exactly the same as Jeff. I don't really mind who starts. If if it was me personally, I'd probably put Cam to start because I reckon Cortez is awesome off the bench. I'd really do. But as long as it's those two, and whatever order it is, doesn't really bother me. And Cortez has taken a little bit of a heat, but as you said, Jeff, mate, there is a lot of stuff he doesn't get to control in that environment that is not not his doing. And the worst thing they can do is get rid of him. You know, he's got to be in that team somewhere. And I tell you what, he'll be awesome against the French. Just give him an opportunity. He'll be great.